always look to the lives of people. One minute, yeah, I guess we can go with it. Then we're right on time. I've got 9.59 on my cell phone. <laughs> but my watch is five minutes fast. <laughs> okay, so you'll sit on that side. Like you side. We can go in now. Right where you are at, at, after finishing the other part. I mean, you could be at the chair. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship this morning, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost and our order of spoken matins. Uh, the order of service and music is in our bulletin as well as our PowerPoint. Let us join our voices together for our first song, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and let us rise. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. So give unto us the fullness of your grace, that we may be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Pleases me this morning to read from the Old Testament, Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. 
So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and pulled up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This is one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reads from Hebrews 2, 1 through 13. Therefore, we must pay great attention, greater attention to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away from it. For if the message declared through angels was valid, and every transgression or disobedience received a just penalty, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It was declared at first through the Lord, through the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard him, while God added his testimony by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now God did not subject the coming world, but with about which we are speaking to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might, ta <clears throat> he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom through all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who <clears throat> sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my tr trust in him and again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise and speak the gospel verse together. Alleluia, alleluia. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his never-ending love lasts forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 2 to 16. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this command for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated.
May God fill you all with great hope and joy and peace in your believing. Amen. Our message today for this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Genesis 2, Hebrews 2, and Mark 10, where Jesus talks about faith and marriage and divorce and blesses children in the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God joins together, people shouldn't separate. Yet we're all well aware how our human nature is to tear things apart, even without wanting to do so. We know the conflicts that we pray about and see in the news, the Israel, Gaza, Lebanon, West Bank, Ukraine, Russia, and that's just a few that get the most advertisement. Destruction is easier than construction. One of my dear clergy friends is beginning this path in his marriage where his wife has wanted a separation. The pain, hurt, the anger, the shock, it's grief, it's loss, a form of death. He's like a brother to me, really, and so I do a lot of listening and comforting and praying with him. When two become one, the pulling apart of that unity is catastrophic. Those of you who experience it know this better than I. God is the creator. We are made in his image. God is the potter. We are the clay. He is the planter. We his vineyard. God weaves and we are his unique fabric. God joins. Humans separate. When Jesus deals with this in Mark's gospel, the Pharisees are testing him. They detest Jesus' ministry among the so-called unsavories that the religious league deem unfit. Pharisees really want division. They hate and are jealous of Jesus' popularity. The love and hope Jesus brings is dangerous to their agenda. They would rather preserve the past as it was, keep things nice, neat, and orderly. So, Jesus, is divorce allowed? In our Lord's biblical world and culture, individuals don't get married. Families get married. Each family offers a spouse to match the values, a divine fusion of community honor. It has political and economic ramifications. Marriage had not been about a matter of falling in love, but about honoring one's parents. Divorce, then, entails the disillusion and dissolving of these extended family ties, a challenge for family of the former wife and likely results in lots of family feuding. Ancient culture works on the shame and honor system. Entire families are disgraced, no matter the reason. But in spite of this, divorce becomes a common, simple process. And at that time, remember, women and children have no rights. A man can simply write on a piece of paper, she is not my wife, and I'm not her husband. And he gives her that paper and can kick her to the curb. That's it. A woman could never do that, would never be able to initiate a divorce. She, they would be powerless. So how does one go about dismantling what God in heaven has joined? Leaving parents and uniting with wife, the two become one flesh. No longer two entities, just one. And what God has joined, let no one separate. That is from Genesis. The human creation the, in the Hebrew, the ha-adam, is male-female. Both and, not necessarily isolated and separate. Male and female, not interchangeable, but similar and compatible. Lots of overlap in the body. And that's the old Hebrew understanding in the Old Testament of creation. God's word made Adam by taking a part of his body to create a new side. And even that in the Hebrew is a wonderful building term, like two sides of the same building. They're different, but the same. They saw humans the same way. And God takes that human and makes a suitable helper. And even that helper is a wonderful term. It is not support, it's subordinate. It isn't demeaning or diminishing or servile. It's not like Archie Bunker in the old TV show All in the Family when explains why women should earn less than men on the job. Well, it's a well-known fact. Men are worth more because Eve came from a rib. Cheaper cut. No. Well, not today's standards either. But no, that's not how God sees helper. It isn't an imbalance. It's a compatibility, a wonderful completeness. 
Most of you will remember the name Dorothea Korchuk. Uh, I still remember as a seminary student, she was giving a talk to us about the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Back in the early 90s, I'll never forget. She would say, well, a man in a household might be the head, but he must remember the woman is the neck. Guiding, turning, helping. Very good. Helper is significant. It is strong. God is a helper to Israel. That's all over the Old Testament scriptures. In fact, Moses said God is his helper to conquer Pharaoh. No one is stronger, no one is weaker than the other. Each has unique gifts to share and enjoy. God makes them bone of bone, flesh of flesh. They are the same. They are coming together as one. And they each share a wonderful intimacy, this divine marriage. And incidentally, that's also where we get the understanding in Holy Communion. That it is the divine and mysterious inner intimate communion with our God in the bread and wine that Jesus comes to us to dwell in us, to fill us with his life and strength. When God joins this in his people, the differences diminish. It's almost like when you see old couples and they start to look alike. Well, they do, and it's kind of that way. The woman makes it possible for the man to do what he could never have done alone, and the same is for the woman she could not do alone. They complement. It's wonderful. And even though this union also unites families, the man leaves his father and mother is joined to the wife. That may not only just be physical, but emotional and sacrificial. The man's first loyalty separates from the home life and is given to the new life in his home with his family, his wife and children. Most often marriages dissolve because this leaving from family to focus on a new home life isn't always fulfilled. Focus can be too much on the self and what the self needs apart from what the spouse needs. So when divorce happens, we all suffer with them. The impact, the pain, the collateral damage reaches out and touches all of us. And the truth is, sometimes divorce is necessary and the best possible yet painful solution. It's a sad reality. But God can still heal through this, and he does. The forgiveness never wanes. In Christ, he is there to love and to help us cope and forgive and to answer us with hope. Even for people not married or joined together, we all divorce things in our lives, sometimes even without knowing it. We cut ourselves off from those we disagree with. You don't like what the politician's saying on the TV or your iPhone or computer, you shut it off. Change the channel. Get a different algorithm. We live in a cancel culture, which sometimes is understandable when things go wrong, but it also hurts. Ties are cut between people constantly. Unfriended on Facebook, a blocked phone number. It's easy to think throwing away a relationship is best. This is one reason why the Hebrews Epistle author warns us right in the beginning of it. We must pay closer attention to what we have heard from God's word, lest we drift away. The farther people drift away from scripture, from the community of the saints gathered, the farther they can drift from God and his gracious promises to help and uphold us. So when the religious leaders try to expose Jesus, they go to Moses' command for divorce. Sure, it was allowed because the hardness of the human heart. That's the problem there. That's what Jesus is honing in on. It's because you were like this that it had to happen. We've been created to be together. God doesn't want us as islands. He loves all kinds of families and blesses them. Jesus focuses on embracing the unity of partners as part of God's divine creation. A unity that is a gift through the Holy Spirit. Humans dirty the family home with sin and selfishness, but grace and mercy is Jesus' rescue to help us so that we heal. From this, Jesus turns to welcoming children. Does that seem strange or not? Little children, those perceived as a nuisance, considered less than, often not wanted to be around. They were the least of these, and they represent the most vulnerable in that culture. He receives them and loves them. He shows that all, all are worthy of God's love no matter who. Those suffering the pain and brokenness of divorce or severed relationships are precisely some of the least of these who receive the kingdom in their dependence on God's love. Children here are given as models for receiving God's kingdom. Trust and love and welcome and acceptance. <coughs> Pardon me. 
They don't ask who or why. They just hug and love and trust you and your word. Now that is both new and amazing here in the scriptures. And for the religious people gathered here with Jesus, women and children are given highest value by our Lord. They're protected and cared for in ways beyond our understanding. And we all need protection because the evil foe exists to work to undermine our unity. Satan would like to have us all as islands so that he could hit us individually to divide and conquer. This is why God's love sends Jesus to us without limit and without condemnation. God's love is always about broadening our thinking and our loving, expanding our understanding of the way we live in relationship to one another, that we live in loving relationship. He desires that we all love, have compassion and mercy for the needs of all the little ones, whether they be children or poor, disabled or refugees seeking life, <coughs> pardon, or the sick and infirmed or the abused, the divorced, the widowed, the isolated, any who are considered other than or the least. Those Jesus lifts up. When we fail or fall, Jesus forgives and forgives and forgives. Even for those who are unmarried or widowed, we may wish all of us to cut and run away from life when it's hard, but God doesn't. We may deserve divorce from God. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Always happens at the wrong time. <clears throat> God never cuts ties. And we as the Holy Church, the scattered that are gathered together, we are Jesus' bride. We are married to him by faith in his shed blood. Christ is the living word. He is the perfect man, the new human, the great Israel, the last word on our future and eternal life. Rather than filing for divorce, Jesus files for forgiveness. He pays the price when we move away from his grace. He dies for us when we evade his way. And he draws close to us in our faith life when we would rather chase after negative passions. Jesus willingly suffers the punishment of the heartache we cause. The divorce human papers are ripped up and we are signed into the Lamb's Book of Life in his blood, the red ink of the cross, the suffering, the bleeding, left alone by his father, the dying, and through that all, that mess of death, Jesus joins us forever. And we're made new. We are reconnected to those around us by the Spirit's presence and unity. We're washed clean. We're knitted together. And we walk together as one people, not always agreeing, but agreeing to stay and remain as one. And we will all that one day be in heaven together when we depart this life. So in the name, in his name, the name of our Lord Jesus, may we live to get along in this life to the honor of our God and the good news of those who see Jesus in us every day. And may no one separate that. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond our human understanding, guard your hearts and lives in the one true faith in Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen.
Handshake, fist bump, wave, you may ride. Greet your neighbor. Gracious Father, we pray to, for the growth of your kingdom, grace and forgiveness, that we live out our identities as your dear children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Christian Church, both here and assembled in congregations throughout the world, that we be one as our God is one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Teach us to see ever more clearly that life and happiness, health and daily bread, peace of heart, forgiveness of sins, and the promise of life forever with you are gifts of your divine grace. Continue your mercies toward us, our fellow believers and all humankind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are married, all parents, guardians, children, and every member of all families, that we live out our unique vocations in joy, peace, protection, and prosperity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all public servants, including those who serve in the government and in our armed forces, that they would find refuge in the strong arms of the Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer in heart, mind and body, especially we remember Eric and Deanna, Tom, Albert, Tom, Judy, Paula, Glenn, Lulu, Sue, Abby, Ilsa, Anne, the Reverend Robert, Jeff and Sue, Sonia, Eric, Marilyn, Sonia's mother, Irene, and son-in-law Chris, Hayden and his mother and family, Viola and her family, especially her young daughter, Donna's granddaughter, Violet, Janice's aunts, Janet and Cora, and Lynn's friend, Adol. That they find restoration in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Father, we are your family. Help our lives reflect who you are and what you have done to make us your own. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 